So here at, at Bodhnath Stupa, let's discuss the circumambulation, the Kora, a little bit. So people are making pilgrimage here. They are walking around and uh, making circles around the stupa. Some might make one round, some might make three rounds, some might make 108 rounds. Various numbers and, and, um, and it, it might have a number of reasons why they make a certain number of rounds. I believe it's, it's typically an odd number, um, an odd number of, of rounds. Um, they go clockwise as opposed to the Muslims who make tawaf counterclockwise. Um, they're spinning prayer wheels sometimes. I'll discuss that in another in another video. But what's interesting is this is very similar. I just, I just wanted to make a couple a couple interesting connections. Like at least they're interesting to me. In um, so they're they're making these circuits around the stupa and you know sometimes stopping at little shrines doing some little prayers some prostrations lighting some incense lighting some butter lamps spinning the prayer wheels they might personally be clicking their prayer beads they might have a little um, handheld prayer wheel that they're spinning um, but it's interesting that this is this is similar to uh, and, and a lot of elders are walking around grandmas and grandpas sometimes whole families and it reminds me a lot like in America in the evenings and sometimes in the mornings you go to the local high schools and there will be uh, you know there's the uh, the football field and then there will be a track around it and you'll see a lot of the locals you know walking laps around it sometimes running but usually walking laps so instead of walking around the football field, they're walking laps around the stupa. So it's, it's like a little physical exercise and spiritual exercise. When I was at Bunath Temple the other day, the stupa on the second highest point in Kathmandu Valley, um, it was quite interesting because there's a huge staircase going all the way up to the stupa. And it's, it's, a, it's a nice little walk. Um, you know, it could be a little, little challenging if you're, if you're a bit out of shape, a bit overweight, if you've had an injury. So it's a challenge, and so you're supposed to gain merit from, uh, from such challenges. Spiritual benefit from, um, from facing a difficulty for a bigger spiritual goal, um, for a type of visitation, a type of zirat. Um, so it's interesting that on those stairs, I was seeing a lot of, like along the way, about part way up, there was a building where a lot of young men were in this little building doing pull-ups and they were doing push-ups and they were running up and down the stairs, you know, carrying their backpack. So it's, it's, a, it, it's a workout location for the local community. So you've got people doing physical and spiritual exercises at the same location. And I thought that was really fascinating. Um, and if I happen to get back to Swayabunath, I'll, I'll uh, try to document document that as well. But cute old couple um, doing their rounds. This is a really amazing place in a lot of ways, just to get a you know, to see the different faces of humanity. Such a variety. You see East Asia, Central Asia, and South Asia meeting at this location. Vajrayana monks, a lot of locals, it's very cool. Sometimes you'll see some Westerners through here. But generally you're going, you're, you're going clockwise around it, walking the track, the walking path. And there'll be benches along the way where people can take a break. Sometimes you'll see people meditating on the bench, um, on a bench like, uh, I've seen men and women going around selling milk tea and black tea to devotees. So it's very interesting, like, uh, you know, I would love at some point to go, go on Hajj and Umrah to Mecca and Medina. And to, like, you know, I'm very interested in comparative uh, studies and to look at pilgrimage comparatively. Um, I think it's a very fascinating human phenomenon. Um... You know, I would love to go and visit um, 
sites from various traditions and, and just observe, um, you know, how we do things in various traditions. There are many Jain pilgrimage sites around India in Gujarat, Jharkhand, Bihar, Rajasthan, uh, Karnataka, like places I would love to go and see. Um, there are some very fascinating Hindu pilgrimage sites in Uttarakhand, the Chota Char Dam, various sources of the Ganges, including the official source at Gangotri and the official source of the Yamuna at Yamunotri, which then flows into the Ganga later. I would love to visit those locations. They're beautiful natural places. Uh, I like to visit power places, powerful nature places. It's starting to rain now. You know, there uh, would be interesting to visit uh, Christian sacred sites. And it, but I, I really love going to the places of the prophets. And so I've done a lot of that in the Balad Asham region of Turkey. And I'd like to do some more. And if I could, I'd like to go visit places of the prophets all throughout the Middle East, in Iraq, in Iran, in Syria, in Jordan, in the Holy Land, in Oman, all over there. There are places associated with the prophets all over the Middle East. And I'd, I'd love to go visit all of them and observe how people are making pilgrimage and to learn the stories associated with the location. Um, Sometimes it's not about the authenticity historically of a location as much as the personal lesson that we, that we derive from it, connecting with the stories of, of, of the prophets, peace be upon them, and the friends of God, the, you know, the Oliya, may Allah be pleased with them. You know, like those, those are very fascinating, you know, and it's like, and there are some very powerful, interesting places of, of pilgrimage from many traditions. Um, you know, there's that, that uh, the famous hike in northern Spain associated with James the Just, the brother of Jesus, um, that extends along the northern section of Spain. And that's quite interesting to me. That's, that's one that, that, that might be a, 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 uh, of, of benefit. And I've watched, I watched a documentary about that, and I, I feel like I watched a movie about it as well. Pilgrimage is a very fascinating thing. It's a way of, of connecting with stories and energies from the past, connecting with others who are also on the spiritual path, um, a way of, of doing penance, of repenting and reorienting our lives in a new, new direction, ideally toward truth, of going through repentance and purification, of doing intense asceticism in, 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 in those ways. Um, a place of, of learning, you know, like, like pilgrimage is often like associated with learning. Pilgrims will often stay and study with knowledgeable people in various pilgrimage locations. Like this is a place of learning here. People come and they study with big monks and nuns and learn meditation techniques, learn about the scriptures, learn about um, painting techniques that sake for sacred paintings or statue making or whatever it might be, incense making, all types of things. The same way that historically people would go to Mecca and Medina and study with great scholars from all around the world and sometimes spend many years. Um, it's interesting that, that uh, this is no longer the case, not nearly to the same extent. It's much more politicized and... and you know, um, but I, I pray for a cultural renaissance around the world and for spiritual renewal and spiritual revival. Sometimes that begins with a pilgrimage, um, but ultimately it's about making a pilgrimage of the heart, about changing our ways, leaving an unhealthy, broken way of living, a toxic way of living and entering into a more natural, authentic way of living. Um, going back to our source and our return here in this very life, right here and right now. Getting back to our original pure nature. So also just before drawing this to a close, I will mention, so 
So people are like, you know, this is kind of like a walking track in, in North America where people are doing, getting physical exercise as well as spiritual exercise. But there is a word that I used earlier, asceticism. And asceticism includes sometimes, um, you know, various, various physical and spiritual activities that are geared toward um, self-disciplines, you know, uh, overcoming our, our base desires, mastering our, our lower desires, overcoming our lower self, uh, self's um, attachments. Um, and it's called, we, so we practice asceticism. And this might include various, uh, you know, difficult exercises, um, often associated with, you know, like um, holding the body in certain positions or walking great distances, fasting, abstaining from food and drink, abstaining from uh, physical intimacy, um, eating a, 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 a very narrow range of foods for self-discipline. Maybe a big meat eater might abstain from meat eating in order to overcome their base desires and see the base desires more clearly. And so they might be vegetarian for a pe period of time or do intermittent fasting for 19, 20 hours at a time. Or maybe they might go... Um, you know, um, several days without eating or several days without drinking. So asceticism is related to word athleticism from ancient Greek. And so it's, it's, it's interesting, these connections. And so you can actually see a type of very, very low impact athleticism in practice here in motion. Quite fascinating. So I'll go ahead and draw this to a close, but I think that a set, uh, you know, all of us could use a bit of asceticism in order to see ourselves clearly, to get a good mirror, to see our desires honestly and clearly, and then gain some tools to begin to master them, overcome them, and let go of uh, unhealthy uh, patterns, unhealthy eating patterns, unhealthy drinking patterns, unhealthy addictions. Um, that might be, they, they, they might be um, mental patterns and not just a physical pattern. Although every physical pattern has, has mental connections, you know. The mind and the body are, are much more intricately interconnected than we might imagine. So go ahead and draw this one to a close, but everyone be healthy. Really, really strive to attain optimal health now and, and take a holistic approach to attaining this, this optimal health best you can a holistic approach is is uh, a wise and just approach